Hello, my name is Gu Kyun Cho from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I couldn't believe in a God I couldn't see, and even if a God did exist, I didn't think that the man named Jesus could be him. Eventually, I ended up in a situation I couldn't control. I lost everything to the stock market. It was during this despair that I met the risen Jesus, and I came to believe in Jesus as my Lord and my God. I want to share this testimony with you. In my university years, I met a girl through a friend, and she was a Christian from a devout family. We dated for three years, and we even went as far as talking about marriage. One day, my girlfriend asked me, very sincerely, Can you promise me that you'll keep going to church with me after we marry? I thought that it wasn't a big deal, because it was only once a week. So I told her that I would go, but I asked her not to make any demands for me to become a believer. That was how church became a regular part of my life. After we got married, I attended church with my wife like I had promised. When I actually went to church, I discovered that there were many different types of worship services, and we decided just to attend the Sunday worship service. <laughs> but even that was proving to be hard to do without actual faith. I couldn't understand the sermons, so I would watch sports on my cell phone or fall asleep during service. If I was still bored, I stepped outside for a smoke. One time I asked my wife, how can you believe in a God you can't even see? She replied, because it's in the Bible. <laughs> then I said, well, I can't believe in the Bible itself, so how can someone like me believe in God? Then she said, I don't know. If you're that curious, why don't you ask the pastor? And she couldn't give me a straight answer. I was fascinated by my wife who could just believe in God without any doubts. <laughs> I followed my wife to church like this for 10 years. My interests were elsewhere, and it was in stocks. I had begun investing in stocks during my university years, and I loved it. When I was a student, $3,000 was a huge amount of money. But I went ahead and fearlessly invested all of it in my first stock. Then I lost half of it in a week, and I almost lost my mind. But the next day, the stock price shot up, and I regained all the money I lost. Plus, I made a profit. It was the best feeling ever. <laughs> the thrill of stock investments completely won me over. I was dating my wife at the time, but I never said a word to her about my stock investments. After I graduated, I got hired at the company where I work now. The company was in another province, so we had to have a long-distance relationship until we got married. During that period, I could play with stocks as much as I wanted without her finding out. But by the end of a year of hard work, I wasn't left with savings, but a $10,000 debt due to my losses in stock investments. The wedding date was drawing near, and I didn't know what to do. So I asked my girlfriend to see me. She must have thought that I was about to tell her something special, because she looked all excited and said, Hurry up and tell me. <laughs> when I saw her looking at me with shining eyes full of innocent hope, I felt guilty, so I told her the truth. I said, Listen, I, um, have some debt. Will you still marry me? And weeping, my girlfriend said yes, because it was the day before the wedding. <laughs> I couldn't quit doing stocks even after we got married. I secretly invested in stocks without my wife knowing. And I couldn't do that without getting loans. I needed to pay off the loans as fast as I could before my wife found out. So I mostly invested in stocks that had sharp rises and falls and yielded fast, big money. If I got lucky and made a lot of profit in a day, I felt like people who saved up money over long periods of time were fools. I dreamed of the day when I could hit it big with stocks and quit my job. Then I could do stocks all day long. But those daydreams didn't last very long. One day, when my wife was nearly due to give birth to our first child, she happened to find a piece of mail that was related to my loans. That was how she discovered that I had been doing stocks behind her back. It was traumatic to my wife, to the point where I was worried about our baby's well-being. Thankfully, our baby was born with perfect health. I promised my wife that I would never do this again. But as time passed, I couldn't stop thinking about the money I had lost in stocks. My wife and our baby were doing fine, so I started doing stocks again. Then the same kind of thing happened a few more times. Whenever my wife was almost over one instant, another one would blow up in her face. And because of that, she was in tears even when she found out she was pregnant again, and even on the day I got promoted. I really didn't want to disappoint my wife anymore. I didn't want to lose my family over a bunch of stocks, either. I thought that if I put my mind to it, I could quit stocks whenever I wanted to, but that was a big underestimation of the situation on my part. 
I made up my mind and tried to quit doing stocks. But a year later, I was back making investments. The more I did stocks, the more money I spent. In just a single year, all the loans I took out amounted to thousands of dollars of debt. I was an addict. I was so stressed out that my health began to suffer. I lost my vision till I badly needed glasses, and I got shingles on my back. My wife worried for me because she thought the stress was from work. And I just couldn't bring myself to tell her that it was from doing stocks again. I was so frustrated that I even went to see a fortune teller without my wife knowing. But the fortune teller told me, You're very lucky to have a wife like her. You must only listen to her. But it didn't help me at all. <laughs> so I prayed to God even though I didn't even believe in him. I said, God, please help me. Please, make my stocks go up. I've made a mess I can't handle. Please save me. I'm going to die. If you hate me, please, at least have mercy on my wife. She's a good Christian. I knew that it was a futile prayer, but I couldn't think of any other way. The ticking time bomb was closing in on me, but my wife had absolutely no idea. Then one day, she heard the gospel of the resurrection, and was telling me just how happy she was these days. I didn't know what the gospel of the resurrection was, but I thought that if it made her this happy, things could possibly work out for us. Then, one day, I had an amazing experience. I had a dream where the words of the Bible entered my body. I told my wife about it, and she said that it was the happiest day of her life. Since she was happy, I was happy too. Then that very evening, the time bomb finally exploded. She found another piece of mail about a loan, and she just fell apart. There was no way that we could possibly handle tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt. But what was even worse for my wife was that she had been betrayed yet again. She couldn't get out of bed all day long, and I thought, this is truly how it all ends. I had no strength left. I resigned myself to what was to come. But then, my wife got back onto her feet two days later. I thought she was going to pack her bags, but she suddenly said that all of this had happened because she had been the lord of herself. I had no idea what she was talking about, but I instinctively clung to her words. I begged her, If I met Jesus, just like you did, I could change too, right? Please, give me one more chance. I'll do everything you tell me to do. Then my wife said, all you have to do is obey God's words, not mine. I was so curious as to what this gospel of the resurrection was that had changed my wife this much. Before, I used to tell my wife that we should only go to church once a month. But now I really wanted to change, so we went to church every single week. The pastor talked about nothing but the resurrection. He said that, when you look at the cross of the resurrection, you see the one who died on the cross, Jesus, as God. And he said that there is no salvation without believing in him as Lord. But if the resurrection really did happen, it made sense that this was all true. But I couldn't believe in the resurrection. In order to try believing in the resurrection, I read the book of John and examined all the historical resources about the resurrection offered to me. I also watched a lot of testimonies of church members who were supposed to be living witnesses to the resurrection. All the testimony givers said that the resurrection was a historical fact and that it's the proof everyone can believe, but I couldn't agree at all. All the witnesses in the Bible, like the disciples and other people, were already dead. How could dead people be valid witnesses? I just couldn't understand. But when I saw that church members who hadn't been able to believe in the resurrection like me had all surrendered to the fact that it was a part of history, I thought, everyone else can believe except me. That really made me think a lot about this issue. I talked about my struggle during a small church meeting. And what the leader said in response was a big surprise. He said, it's not that you can't believe, it's that you won't believe. With that attitude that you have right now, 
No matter what evidence is shown to you, you'll keep asking for something more. You'll keep doing that for the rest of your life. Then I realized that he was right. In my heart, I had already decided that Jesus was just a man. No matter what evidence I was shown to the contrary, so I couldn't believe in Jesus as God. In Revelation chapter 3, it says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. I had to open the door. But instead of opening it, I was holding it shut as tightly as I could because I was afraid that he might come in and I was daring Jesus to open the door. I was thinking, if you really are God, then you open this door. I dare you. Then for the first time in my life, I cried out to God, Please, I want to open this door too. God, please help me. I cried out desperately, like a madman. Then I felt like God was telling me, I am your father, I love you. Whether you believe or not, I've loved you from the beginning. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he rose again in three days according to the scriptures. Though it was told that the resurrection was historical fact and that there were martyred witnesses, I could not believe at all. But in front of Jesus, who had accomplished everything according to the prophecies in the scriptures, I couldn't make any excuses anymore. The risen Jesus really was God. The pastor would say that trying to understand the resurrection with a human mind was impossible, even if you tried for thousands of years. Now I understood what he meant. You can only believe in the resurrection through God's means. I had been trampling on Jesus, insisting that Jesus was just a man and that he could never be God, demanding that he appear in front of me. When I realized that I was the one spitting at and insulting Jesus in front of the cross, I thought I was going to go insane with regret. God, can even someone like me be forgiven? I didn't believe in Jesus. I was the Lord of myself. I was addicted to stocks, but I was a coward and I made excuses as if I had done it all for my family. I was a complete slave to money and ambition, and I didn't even know that I was running down a path of destruction as I pursued those things. I'm so sorry, God. Please forgive me. I wept and wept. I repented the sin of insisting that my life belonged to myself and not believing in Jesus as I lived however I wanted, and I received Jesus as the Lord of my heart. Honestly, I was someone who never cared about anything except my stocks going up. If I bought stocks related to drugs for an infectious disease, I wanted more people to get that disease so that my stocks would go up. If I bought stocks related to war, I wanted North Korea to fire a missile. I didn't care if people got sick or died. I was completely apathetic. Then, when I came to stand before the risen Jesus, I saw my evil heart for what it was. I realized that I had killed countless people in my heart, and all the while I watched my wife having such a hard time, I had been thinking, I'm sorry I lied to you, honey, but you wouldn't be so upset if I had made a ton of profit now, would you? I had been killing my wife in my heart. I realized how scary it is to be your own lord. It was completely true what God had said. Hating people really was murder. In terms of my circumstances, nothing had changed. But because my heart had submitted to the Lord, my life, which had seemed like it would never change, changed a lot. I used to worship my ancestors even as I followed my wife to church. That was because I thought it was a fine tradition of her country and the proper way to respect my ancestors. But because Jesus was my Lord now, I came to obey all of his words. I was told that sacrifices of pagans were actually offered to demons, so I quit ancestor worship immediately. I also quit smoking when I heard that my body was a holy temple for Christ. I had smoked for 20 years, and I had always broken promises to my wife and kids that I'd quit. But because Jesus had bled and died for me, it was fitting for me to fight sin till I bled too. <laughs> Every morning, I also prayed in tears for my mom and my younger sisters to meet the risen Jesus like me. I had always given them such a hard time. I am still lacking in many respects, but I am sharing the gospel with my friends and co-workers. 
One time, a friend told me how surprised he was that I had changed. He said that I sounded like a pastor because I only talked about Jesus. <laughs> More than anything, I felt badly for how I had treated my wife. Even when I had a lot of money trading stocks, I hadn't even bought her a small gift. My wife said to me that the greatest gift she could have ever gotten was me coming back to God, and I felt so badly for what I had done that I said, I'll never betray you or God ever again, as I held her tightly. Living together for 10 years, we had our differences, but I still believe that I love my wife more than anyone else. But when I came to know the heart of God, I learned what true love was. As it says in the Bible, as the weaker partner, my wife was someone I ought to love as my own body. Those words were truly words of blessing for me. Amen. I was someone who could not believe in Jesus as God, and I lived as my own God, doing whatever I wanted, including wanting to profit big in stocks. By the grace of God, I came to meet the risen Jesus, and my eyes were open to the eternal kingdom. Now I have become someone who only fixes my eyes on God-given rewards, instead of things that will rot away. Amen. After ten years of being married to each other, my wife and I are finally united in heart, and as we walk with Jesus, we live a heavenly life on this earth. Now, with my wife who is my co-worker in Christ, I will live as someone who saves souls with the gospel. Thank you.